These headwinds are getting worse by the second. Um, we currently have 49 minutes until we get to our airport. However, we are down to a, an hour and a half worth of fuel. Today we're flying from Nashville to Arkansas and it's bumpy. So fasten your seatbelt and let's go. Clear prep. This video is sponsored by IP Vanish. Stay till the end to find out how they can give you access to unrestricted internet privately and securely, even while you're traveling. Good morning, everybody. As you can probably tell, the frequencies are very busy today. We are actually departing Nashville International. So this is a Clash Charlie, very, very busy airport. We are taxiing all the way down Tango 4 and then falling in behind a Southwest Airlines jet to continue on Sierra to get to Runway 2 Center. So that is the game plan for today. I'm gonna slow down here because I don't want to get too close to this jet, wake turbulence and all that jazz. But anyway, it's a great day to fly. Currently 70, no, not 70, good gracious. It's currently 37 degrees. So definitely a little chilly, but that's okay. And ground Cherokee 773 in November. I need to do a quick run up. Would you like me to sit in that Sierra one to stay out of the way? And Cherokee, uh, um, three Bravo November. If you can actually make a 180 and get back onto Tango 4 for me. Um, so being on CR it's just or CR one is gonna be a bad idea. So just join Tango Four again and hold short of Sierra on Tango Four to do your run up. Roger, making that one eighty now, I'll taxi back up Sierra, join Tango Four to do the run up seven seven three in November. Thank you. You're welcome. Well that works. I thought they'd have a run up area. They do not. <laughs> but that is all good. Can't see anybody over that hill. And ground 773 in November on Tango 4. Is this okay for you? I'll be quick. And uh, November 3 in November. Yep, uh, that's perfect right there. And actually, now you're going to have to wait for a Delta. They have a flow time, and they have two aircraft on uh, Sierra ahead of them. So you're waiting for three aircraft, you'll, and you'll be number four. <laughs> Roger that. No problem. 773 in November. Thanks for the heads up. The Delta's pulling up on your right side. You'll follow them to the runway when you're ready in Tower 18. Roger, I'll follow the Delta on my right side and switch over to tower when I'm ready. 773 in November, thank you. There we go, clear. Nashville Tower, Cherokee 773 in November, holding short of two center at CR, ready for departure. November 773 in November, Nashville Tower, fly runway heading, runway two center, clear for takeoff. Fly runway heading, two center, clear for takeoff. 773 in November, thanks. Keep that roll coming, here we go. Final is clear. That you got a hawk at the end of two center circling. Good to know. Uh, uh, use caution, November three, November hawk reported circling at the departure end of runway two center. Roger, I'll use caution seven seven three, November. Thanks. We got fifty eight fifteen. That was you that saw the hawk. Okay. It was about hundred feet above the ground. Full power. To so report contact departure. Got a good amount of crosswind here. A little bit of an upslope. Going to get a little bit faster. Caution, a hawk reported at departure end 100 feet off the ground. Gosh, still down 374. November 640, turn left, contact ground for Niner. Left and ground for Niner, 1640. All gauges are in the green and looking good. Perfect. I do not see the hawk. So that works for me. November, turn left heading 280. Left heading 280-773 in November. Still jet 356, runway 2 center, clear for takeoff. 2 center, clear for takeoff, still jet 356. Still jet 328, turn right at Lima, contact ground for Continue that climb. 
Fuel pump off, fuel pressure remains in the green, landing light off. Right, did you see uh, the Hawk on departure end? I did not, I was looking for it though for 7738 November. 73 November, copy that, contact uh, departure, see ya. Over to departure, have a nice day, 7738 November. Morning departure, Cherokee 773 in November, heading 280, climbing through 2300. 7738 November, National Raider contact, climb attain 6000. Climb attain 6000, 7738 November. Alright. Autopilot on, heading mode active, continuing that climb, we'll do 115 or so. Actually, we don't even need to do 115, we have a really good climb rate right now. National Raider November, fighting 310. 310 now, 773 in November. Blitter 5-1, if that was you checking in, expect the visual approach, Murfreesboro Airport, to maintain 4,000. Okay, was checking in. Visual approach, to Murfreesboro, Blitter 51. It's going to maintain 4,000, Blitter 51. Gonna fly right past the city. go. As you can probably tell, uh, leaving a Clash Charlie takes a lot more work than just leaving a random untowered airport or even my Class Delta. So lots of different frequency changes in a very short amount of time, a lot of different instructions in a very short amount of time, but feeling confident, feeling good. It is 23 degrees outside, so my heat is blasting. I've got a ch hot chocolate in the back. Should be good for this flight. I hope. I hate being cold. Going full power on my heater. 3 November, turn left heading 250. Left heading 250, 773 in November. River Nashville, altimeters 3034. 3034, 773 in November. I just wanted to tell you, I think it's kind of funny. This is the most of downtown Nashville I actually got to see on this trip, so I'll definitely be back. <laughs> Just like that, we're out of the bumps. <laughs> not too bad, not too bad. So we're still climbing at 500 feet per minute. We are currently climbing at about 118 miles per hour. Ground speed's 119, so we don't really have any wind helping or hurting us yet. All of our gauges are in the green. Our cylinder head temperature is at 360 degrees. And that loud beeping sound indicates that we are 1,000 feet away from our selected altitude of 6,000. I wanted to go higher because I am doing a longer flight for my first leg for today, but I decided not to because I didn't want to deal with a lot of headwind. So I picked the altitude that has a 12 knot headwind rather than a 21 knot headwind. Now obviously if that ends up not being the case, we may climb, but we'll see what 6,000 looks like and then we'll go from there. Proceed on course, 773 in November, thank you. Direct, enter, enter, nav mode. Pretty much already direct. I think we're going to turn like three degrees. All right, more than that because we're correcting for wind. So it's so funny. It's the exact same temperature. It's 23 degrees up here right now. It's the exact same temperature. That beeping sound indicates we're now 200 feet away from our selected altitude. But it's the exact same temperature that it was last night when I came in and landed in Nashville. The difference is, is I'm not freezing to death because I have the sun beating into the airplane. So that really does help a lot. <laughs> Just like that, we are about to level off at 6,000 feet. We are in the outermost shelf of that Clash Charlie. So we're gonna be leaving this area and then uh, should be pretty smooth sailing. And let's go ahead and lay out our mixture. We're currently burning 15 gallons per hour. I definitely don't wanna keep doing that. So I'm going to pull my RPMs back down, probably 2,600, and now we'll lean it out. If you want to Roger, I'll set you up for that. Keeping an eye on that gallons per hour. We're at 12 now, 11. And there's a little bit of engine roughness, so we'll go full rich here. Or not full rich, excuse me. We'll go a little bit more rich there. And that puts us at about 11 gallons per hour burn rate. I'm cool with that. That works for me. And we'll bump up those RPMs to about 2650 so we can keep a pretty decent airspeed. And with that, that puts our indicated airspeed about 138 and our ground speed 131. So 
We do have a little bit of wind affecting us, but not too bad. Not too bad. Time in route is 3 hours 23 minutes as of right now for 386 nautical miles. Works for me. I ended up staying at the Sheraton Mu uh, City Music Hall, I think is what it's called. It's right next to the airport. It was like two miles away. And I thought with the name that there would be like live music or something to go and do close by, and there was nothing. It's pretty disappointed, to be honest. Number 5 1, contact approach 18.4. 18.4, Blue Raider 51. We just flew over. John C. Toon Airport. I can see the runway just outside over here. I thought about landing there, but there wasn't a, another hotel that I wanted to stay at, and I thought it would be further from the city so there wouldn't be much else to do. I don't know, next time I'm here, maybe I'll go stay there. If you've ever been to Nashville, let me know what you recommend, because the next time I come, I think I'm gonna come for a couple of days so I can actually like go and sightsee and like do things. I was so excited to be in the city of music and I never got to see any music. How lame is that? Oh well. Still fun. Still got some flight time in. Still got to hang out with you, so that's nice. <laughs> oh my gosh, the hotel hooked me up in snacks. Let me show you. Okay, so they didn't have like a little breakfast buffet or anything, and their restaurant was open, but I didn't really feel like sitting down and having an actual breakfast meal this morning. So I went over to their little pantry section and I'm just grabbing up stuff because I didn't know what I was really feeling. I wasn't super hungry yet, but being on a three and a half hour flight, I know I will get hungry. And so I walk over to the counter and I put down all my snacks and the guy goes, it's on me, I hope you have a great flight. And I'm like, well, that was nice of you. You don't have to do that. He's like, I already did it. And I was like, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. It just was so nice. Just like a small thing, but just so nice. So. I got a Diet Pepsi because they don't have Diet Coke here. I got some Doritos. Look at how inflated the bag gets when we fly. Isn't that cool? I also got some napkins. <laughs> I got this chocolate cherry Copper Street granola cookie bake. But it's nothing artificial. It looks kind of like that. So I think that'll be interesting to try. And I even got a beef stick. Now, it may not be chomps, but it'll probably still be pretty good. So we'll do a quick check. We have officially left that Clash Charlie airspace, so it's obviously going to get a lot quieter on the radios, which is cool. All of our gauges are in the green. Our cylinder head temperature is rocking. VFR traffic, 11 o'clock, 3 miles, top altitude unknown. Roger, I'll be looking. 773 in November, thanks. Now I forgot what I was telling you. Oh, we were doing a quick check. So yes, all of our gauges are in the green. Our cylinder head temperature is rocking at 361 degrees. Love to see it. We have burned three gallons of fuel out of our left tank, which is correct. And we haven't switched to our right tank yet, but we'll do that in another 12 minutes or so. Now, as far as our speed is going, not great. <laughs> Unfortunately, our indicated is now at about 130 and our ground speed is at 122. I am going to bump up those RPMs so we can get a little bit faster, but I'm also keeping an eye on my fuel burn too. We want to be burning between 10 to 12 gallons per hour with this high RPM at this altitude, and we're currently about 12.2, so I'm cool with that. That works. That can't be right. That says American Airlines. We just had an American Airlines jet fly past us. That's cool. They are currently going 227 knots. Must be nice. Key three, November contact with the center one two five point eight five. One two five point eight five. Have a nice day. Three in November. Good afternoon, Center Cherokee seven seven three in November. Checking in six thousand. Cherokee seven seven three in November. Metro Center. Uh, good afternoon, National Center three zero three six. Three zero three six seven seven three in November. Thank you. Okay, so I thought it would be kind of cool to do a check, but obviously my airplane is beautiful, so I thought you might want to take a look for a second. 
So our RPMs are currently set to 26.40 and they're fluctuating between 26.40 and 26.50. All of our engine instruments are in the green and our cylinder head temperature is at 364 degrees, which is awesome. We're currently burning 11 and a half gallons per hour, level at 6,000 feet, and we're flying through the air at 137 miles per hour, but our ground speed is 131. So we do have a little bit of wind messing with us, but overall, not too shabby. I'll take it, I'll take it. All day long, I'll take it. <laughs> Just like that, it's time to switch. Right when I said that, I was really excited about switching tanks. It bumped back up to 21, so we'll wait a little bit longer. It takes about six minutes to burn one gallon of fuel, so that is why I burn roughly 10 gallons in an hour. 60 minutes divided by 10 equals six minutes. There you go, easy peasy. So we'll wait up to six minutes, and then it will be time to switch our fuel tanks. It is time to switch those tanks again. So we have 20 gallons in the left and 25 in the right. Fuel pressure is starting out in the green, so electric fuel pump on. Verifying the fuel pressure remains in the green, which looks awesome. And then rolling that fuel selector over here to the right tank. I just wanted to show you. We just got our switch tanks noticed too. So this is actually on time today, that's nice. So fuel pressure remains in the green once again, electric fuel pump off, and once again, the fuel pressure stays in the green. Somebody left this question in my comment section, <laughs> there we go, about why we have to turn on an electric fuel pump whenever we take off, we land, and we switch tanks. And even though we do have a fuel pump that is running consistently throughout the entire flight, the electric fuel pump is just for those critical phases of flight. So it just gives us a little bit of redundancy, just in case, you know, our mechanical fuel pump fails. So uh, I've actually had that happen. It was a couple years ago, and I wasn't filming videos at that time, I don't think, so I don't have any proof of it. But yeah, my mechanical fuel pump failed. So when I turned on my electric fuel pump, I was able to see that difference in my fuel pressure gauge. <sighs> Hot chocolate and a breakfast bar. A meal fit for a queen. I like it. That's actually really good. Hard for flight 35, Mr. Center is 10 views of Chesson Street, landing north, next red center is 3036. I thought we'd do a quick check-in. So we just passed under our three hour mark. We have two hours, 57 minutes. 338 nautical miles to go. Really nice, calm, easy flight so far. ATC's been super helpful. A couple of traffic advisories, no big deal. All of our gauges are in the green. Our cylinder head temperature is still only at 362, so that looks awesome. We're level at 6,000 feet. Our indicated airspeed is 137 miles per hour, and our ground speed is 131. So we're not doing too bad. Outside air temperature has risen to 26 degrees, so it's at least a little bit warmer. But again, I'm glad I have the heater. So I had a question. I told you earlier that I had gotten a Diet Pepsi because they don't have Diet Coke. Are you a Coke or a Pepsi person? And if you don't like soda at all, feel free to leave in the comments what you do like to drink. But I don't really see a difference personally. I don't know. If maybe it's just because I can't tell, like maybe it just all tastes delicious, or in some people's opinions, it all tastes horrible. I like it, <laughs> but I can never tell the difference. So leave me a comment, let me know if you are Pepsi, if you are Coke, or if you don't like soda in general, that's cool too. No harm, no foul. <sighs> Out in the open skies, not a whole lot going around. But the nice thing about that is, is that there are a ton of small airports in the area. So being at 6,000 feet, if I were to lose my engine right now, if I establish best glide, which in our airplane is 79 miles per hour, I might be able to make it to one of these airports. This one here is Beach River Regional. If you live anywhere near Beach River Regional, you need to leave me a comment and let me know, because that would just be wild. 
but if I was able to establish my best glide speed, 79 miles per hour, not put any flaps in, it would be tight, because right now I am not within my glide range, but I'm also going 136 miles per hour. So, I don't know, it'd be interesting. Really hoping that doesn't happen today, but just like anything, if stuff comes up, we'll handle it one step at a time. Bring those RPMs back down to 2650. The nice thing is, is the airplane is getting used to the cold weather, so our fuel flow is now at 11 and a half gallons per hour. RPMs are still 2630 to 2650. So, looking good. 728 contact, Memphis Center 126.45. My biggest disappointment on today so far, my hot chocolate is no longer hot. Shout out to Atlantic though. They were cool. They helped out a lot. Yeah, it's cold, but it still tastes good, so I'm still going to drink it. Just gonna drink it slowly. We have a long ways to go before a uh, bathroom break is possible. And approach Cherokee 773 in November. I just have a question. I'm sorry, 7738 November taken. I just have a quick question. It looks like I'm gonna be flying directly over Memphis. Am I gonna continue doing that or are you gonna give me radar vectors to fly around the class Bravo? No, they're gonna. Uh, maybe keep you over the field because I think that's normally safer for him. But yeah, you'll be talking to Memphis uh, approach in about 40 miles. Excellent. I was hoping you were going to say that. Thank you. Three in November. <laughs> we are going to fly directly over Memphis. So this is officially called Memphis International. I've never flown here even on a commercial flight. And we'll be doing that here in about 40 miles or so. Normally, as I get a little bit closer, they start having me kind of veer off left or right with some radar vectors. And he says we're gonna fly directly over it. So that'll be kind of snazzy. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, we have two hours and 38 minutes. We are definitely going slower than I was hoping, but that's okay. All of our gauges are still in the green. We have 17 gallons of fuel in the right, 20 in the left, and the cylinder head temperature is 367. We're still level 6,000 feet. Indicated airspeed's looking okay. It's at 135, but the ground speed is at 124. So we have about 11 to 12 mile per hour headwind right now, which is a bummer, but. So it was kind of funny. I was getting ready to go and there was a jet that was parked in front of us when we were, you know, I say us, you and I. Uh, when we were at the FBO over in Nashville. And so I'm kind of waiting, you know, I'm taking my time and stuff. I'm getting everything set up. I'm doing my pre-flight. It's all looking good. And I'm ready to go. But it was really funny because I walked inside and I was like, hey, you know, just wanted to ask, do you know when they plan to depart? Well, they didn't have a departure time until 1230. And this was at 1130. So they were going to continue to sit there for an hour. So I asked her, I was like, you know, if you have a guy that could marshal me out just a couple of minutes, like, that would be great. She's like, yeah, absolutely, no problem. Just give me a few minutes. I'm like, okay. So I run to the restroom, and I grab my hot chocolate, and I'm ready to go, and I look outside, and he's just standing in front of the airplane waiting for me. So, of course, I felt terrible. So I run over there, and I'm like, my apologies. I didn't know you were going to be here this fast. He's like, no problem. Take your time. And that's all good. I had to jump out of the airplane to, obviously, tip him because, you know, he's standing out in the cold by himself, so I felt bad, so I ran outside to give him some money, and right before I was able to jump back in the airplane, a uh, fan actually stopped me, and he was like, I saw you in the FBO, and I texted my buddies, and I said that I saw you, and they asked if I said hi, and then you jumped out of the airplane, and I said, this is my chance. So I was able to take a picture with him. It's right here, I'll put it in the video. And uh, Chris, it was so great to meet you. Thank you for taking the time to come over and say hello. Um, you may or may not be the pilot or one of the pilots that I was referring to that was sitting in that jet. I don't fault y'all at all. I just wanted to get around you so I could get out of there. <laughs> we have a Sky West jet that's gonna be flying past us, but they're climbing up wicked fast, so I don't think we'll get the chance to see them. They're 10,000 feet above us already. Hey, Papa, and final Georgia, Delta, Juliet. I don't even see them as a spec. Good afternoon, Memphis Approach. Cherokee 773 in November, checking at 6,000. Cherokee 773 in November, Memphis Approach. Altimeter 3036. 3036, 773 in November, thanks. 
so we are currently about 10 miles away from crossing over those runways. So hopefully we'll get a good view. It doesn't sound super busy, so we may not get to see any cool airplanes taking off or landing, but it's still a beautiful day to fly. We currently have 17 gallons of fuel in the left, 15 in the right. We're burning about 11 gallons per hour. Cylinder head temperature is 369, level 6,000 feet, and we still have quite a bit of a headwind. <laughs> but we have two hours and nine minutes until we get to our destination, so we're making it work. We obviously have plenty of fuel on board, so looking good so far. That's pretty cool. I never noticed when I was flying on a commercial flight if small airplanes like this one are flowing, overflying the field. Now I'm going to start paying attention to that. <laughs> well, we're down to two hours and everything is still looking good. Nothing's really changed. We have three hours worth of fuel on board, so definitely within our minimums when we land as far as our fuel requirements are concerned. Whoa. That was close. Last thing I want is for this to go everywhere. Speed is your discretion. I'll have lower for you once you get to Clark. I don't really taste the difference. I like them both. I'm in the mood to listen to some tunes, so I'm going to go to my downloads. Okay, descend after Clark to And go to shuffle and see what pops up. Number two whiskey limit, fly heading of uh, 085, descend to maintain. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to scroll through until I find a song I actually want to listen to. Shuffle is pointless in my mind. Okay. One hour to go. Legitimately one hour. 111 nautical miles. All gauges are still in the green. We have about two hours of fuel on board, so we're doing well there. Cylinder head temperature is 362. I mean, this has been a really simple, easy, relaxing flight, which I love. ATC has been super nice. One guy kept trying to do the see ya, and he was, it was a little, it was pretty good. I, I think just a little bit more work and it'll be perfect. I can't do it at all, so I don't know what I'm talking about. But anyway, all right, Charlie Delta Hotel. So because these winds keep increasing on us, I have 40, hold on. All right, so because these winds continue to increase on us throughout this whole flight, these headwinds are getting worse by the second. Um, we currently have 49 minutes until we get to our airport. However, we are down to a, an hour and a half worth of fuel. Yes, we still have our minimums, but I just don't feel comfortable continuing the flight, especially because the next leg is going to be so short. So I am going to request to divert to Peril Field instead. They have fuel on board, or they have fuel. <laughs> they have fuel at the airport, and we'll get there pretty quickly. So let's make that request now. Approach Cherokee 773 in November with request. Or 7738 November, say it again. Yeah, this is Cherokee 7738 November. I'd like to request, I'm going to go ahead and uh, divert over to Charlie Delta Hotel, please. Or uh, 7738 November, Roger, clear to, uh, clear to the Camden, Air Camden Airport via direct and stay reason for change. Clear direct to the Camden Airport via direct, and it's just because I don't want to get too low on fuel. I still have plenty, but these winds are killing me for 7738 November. Or, uh, 3 8 November, Roger. Descent pilot's discretion to maintain 4,000. Descent pilot's discretion to maintain 4,000. 7738 November, thanks. Got 1,000 feet to go until we reach that 4,000. Municipal Airport, Harold Field, automated weather observation. 2, 2, 6, 1, 2, 1, 2, 6, 1, 2 0. 0. Wind, calm, visibility, more than 1, 0. Sky condition, clear, below 1, 2,000. Temperature, 1, 6 Celsius. Dew point, minus 5 Celsius. Altimeter, 3, 0. 3, Continue that descent down to 3,000 now, 773 in November.
Try this again. 2000. Temperature, 1 6 Celsius. Dew point, minus 5 Celsius. Altimeter, 3 0 3 2 inches of mercury. There we go. So we are about 25 nautical miles away from the field. We are descending at 500 feet per minute for 3,000. That's where we're going to level off. All of our gauges are in the green. Like I said, I technically have plenty of fuel on board to make it to Texarkana, but because these winds have been increasing, I don't want to get into a position where I could have just landed earlier. So I'm going to land earlier now, top off those tanks, and then jump back in the airplane and continue the rest of my flight home. So I'm cool with it. Things happen, and I kind of knew it was a possibility when I did my weather brief earlier anyways. I was hoping I'd make it all the way to Texarkana but no big deal. All right, so we've got our frequencies in here. Weather sounds good. And we do have an aircraft that is flying around the field. I can't quite tell if they are coming in to land or not. Traffic pattern altitude here is going to be 1,100 feet. And of course it's bumpy, so it's hard to actually get all of this to fit properly, but that's okay. Keeping that speed pretty low just because it is a little bit bumpy and the rough air or maneuvering speed for this airplane is 129 miles per hour. November have uh, the Camden runway 19 and 01 runway end light unusable. And also have an obstruction fire light. It's uh, 5.8 nautical miles southwest Camden and it's uh, 329 feet. Roger, appreciate it, 7738 November. All right, nice of him to give us the notums. We love that. RPM is back up to 2450 or so. We'll see how that does for us. We're about to level off at 3000. And again, that means that we have 1,900 feet to continue to lose to reach that traffic pattern altitude. We have approximately 10 to 11 minutes in route until we do get to that destination airport. And that puts us at about 19 nautical miles. Descend pilot's discretion maintained 2000, 7738 November. Good, and because he keeps talking, we'll listen through it one more time, just make sure we didn't miss anything. Camden Municipal Airport, Harold Field, automated weather observation, 2, 1, 3, 1, Zulu. Wind, 2, 2, 0, at 4 knots. Visibility, 9 -er. Sky condition, clear, below 1, 2,000. Temperature, 1, 6 Celsius. Dew point, minus 4 Celsius. Altimeter, 3, 0, 3, 2 inches of mercury. All right. Feeling good about that. He gave us the notum, so we're looking good there. And we are descending down to 2,000, but because we are still 20 miles away from the field, we're only going to descend at about 100 to 200 feet per minute. Once I get the field in sight, I'll feel much better, and then we can continue that descent all the way down to that 2,000, and then ultimately our traffic pattern altitude. All right, so we have 122.7 as our Unicom or CTAF frequency in. Looks like it's the same. Perfect. That looks good. Don't see any traffic coming in anywhere, and we are going to use nice. runway 19er. They do not specify right traffic, so we will just probably do a straight in because we're already lined up for that. And that should do us nicely. Ooh. Forward, center, Bonanza, 321, Delta Bravo. Small forward, center, stay in. Uh, forward, center, uh, 321, Delta Bravo. November 321 Delta Bravo, go ahead. All right, so the actual runway itself is gonna be in front of us, but to our right, so I'm keeping an eye out for that. Definitely don't see it yet, but of course we're gonna land right into the sun, so it's gonna be a harder uh, runway to spot anyway. 0501, one, one Delta Bravo. Field just 715, climb maintain 13000. At least the temperature has increased for us. It's 44 degrees now. That's actually quite nice. I'm leaving the heater on, but that's still nice. Field just 715, climbing, same level 230. 
I always know it's going to take a while to come in to a destination airport when the time doesn't click down. And that's what I was seeing while we were flying to Texarkana. So I'll make it over there someday. I'll get to stand in two different states someday, but that day is not today. That's okay. November 1 Delta Bravo, radar contact, 7 miles north. Uh, I do see what could potentially be the airport. I can't actually see any runway markings or even the runway for that matter yet, but I do see an open clearing over here, so realistically that's it. It does look to be about the distance I would expect, but I will verify as we get a little bit closer. We're going to set heading 190. Since that is going to be Correct. our runway heading. Push. Or runway 19. Nice. All gauges are still in the green. RPMs are at about 2550. Cylinder head temperature is 351. We're descending through 2300 now at 200 feet per minute for 2000. He did say pilot's discretion, so we don't need to continue that 500 foot per minute descent. Airspeed is a little higher <laughs> than I wanted, so I'm going to pull some of that power back. But we're right around 138 miles per hour, so not too shabby. Uh, you've now cleared to the Dallas Love Airport via direct Orville for the Red 4 route. Just going to get bumpier the lower that we get, too, because we're going to get closer to these trees. to go until we reach that selected altitude of 2000 and then once we level off there for a second I will then roll the altitude selector over to our traffic pattern altitude which again is 1100 feet. November 38 November the uh, Camden Airport says 12 o'clock and 10 miles for inside position. Roger I'll report as soon as I get it inside applied right in the sun appreciate it 7738 November. That's got to be it. Let's see. 6,000 feet by 100 feet. Center one, two, one, three, two, two, yeah. Seven. No other airspace or anything to worry about over here. Perfect. Approach Cherokee 773 in November. I've got the field in sight. Number three, November 3rd is approach to the Camden Airport report cancellation of via for our arrival time on this frequency or through flight service. And uh, thanks for the frequency is approved. Roger, I'll go ahead and cancel with you now and chat with you again when I'm back up in the air for 7738 November. November 3, November, IFR cancellation of C-SPOT, c for the same crew. Have a good day. Frequency change approved and switching over to a different frequency. Have a nice day, 773 November. Block VFR is what I meant to say. All right. Harold Field. Harold Field traffic, Cherokee 7738 November is entering an eight mile straight and runway 19er full stop, Harold Field. 1100. Just coming over here to actually enter a final. Slowly losing some of that altitude, which is cool. Mixture full rich, fuel pump, landing light are on, rotating beacon on, pedo heat and car heat are off. Not seeing any other aircraft anywhere, so that is good. And that is definitely the airport. Perfect. Carroll Field Traffic Cherokee 7738 November is on a five mile straight in final runway 19er full stop, Harold Field. There's farmers down there. Nice. Carroll Field Traffic Cherokee 7738 November, three mile straight in, runway 19er full stop, Harold Field. Carroll Field Traffic Cherokee 7738 November, short final runway 19er full stop, Harold Field. All right, RPM's down to 1,800. And there's our White Hawk first notch and second notch coming up over those trees.
Harold Field traffic, Cherokee 773 in November is clear of the runway taxiing over to the self-serve fuel pumps, Harold Field. With the help of IP Vanish, you can safely and securely visit popular websites, access your bank information, and stay up to date with your favorite TV shows and movies, even when you're traveling. IP Vanish has no user traffic logs, over 2,200 VPN servers, and 75 plus locations around the world that protects you while using unsecured public Wi-Fi in places like the airport. Try IP Vanish VPN for 30 days risk-free and save on the yearly plan by going to www.ipvanish.com forward slash K.